Today we are getting into vacation prep. Of course, when you're going on a vacation, you have to prepare to go on your vacation so you can relax, right? So I'm just gonna kind of go through the top things that I do when I'm getting ready for vacation. It'll be kind of like spend the day with me getting ready for vacation. Let's get started. Okay, so one of the first things we do is we want to make sure that our finances are online. We have our credit cards um, all set up and ready for travel. We have Chase Sapphire Reserve, which is an awesome card for extra perks for travel throughout the year, such as lounge, lounge access, and then we also get uh, travel credits with that card. And then we also have a backup, which is a Capital One. So with, for both of these cards, it's really important to get a credit card that doesn't have no foreign transaction fees, so that when you are making purchases in a different destination, you don't get those extra charges that you normally would see with a standard credit card. So the first thing I do, I pop into my credit cards that I'll be bringing with me during travel, set those travel notifications so that the credit card company knows that I'm traveling and then they have it flagged for when I start processing transactions on those cards that everything's good to go. They're not going to all of a sudden like stop my card and then I can't use them. And then that goes for debit cards as well. So again, traveling internationally, if you need cash, typically it's better to have some sort of debit card for your travel. Because if you were to withdraw cash from your credit card, you will usually end up getting charged a lot of different fees. So what I actually do is have an entirely separate bank account where I use that bank account only for travel. So I only put so much money into that account and I have it linked, you know, obviously with my debit card. And then if something happens while I'm traveling, that debit card is linked to just that account that, um, where I have those funds in and it's not linked to all my other bank accounts. We don't want that. We want to keep everything separate. However, it gives me the ability to be able to transfer funds over into accounts, but no other debit card or any other funds are linked to that account unless I manually do it myself. And again, with the debit card traveling internationally, you need to have a pin. When you're going to Europe or Asia or anywhere, if you're gonna withdraw money, you have to have a four-digit pin. And I will repeat this again. You need a four-digit pin and you must notify your bank that you're traveling. And you must make sure that you have the withdrawal levels high enough for transactions. That was one of the biggest things I learned. I was actually in Paris and I didn't realize that the bank had only like a $100 minimum that we could withdraw a day. What am I gonna do with $100 in Paris? That is not gonna go very far. So um, yeah, I actually ended up calling my bank while I was in Paris to say, hey, we can't withdraw money. They told me I only had a $100 limit per day, so I had to have them raise that so I could withdraw because I'd rather do a bigger withdrawal so that I don't get charged those extra ATM fees. Try and do one withdrawal, and then if I do have a lot of cash left over towards the end, I can just start using that cash up on you know purchases like meals or whatever. However, when I do travel, I do prefer to use a credit card because that way I can keep all my transactions and receipts and everything in one area and then when I get home I just pay that card off right away. So it works out great. But then you're probably wondering, well if you rather use credit cards, why do you have a debit card? Not everywhere will accept credit cards. You sometimes have to have a minimum purchase of a certain amount, otherwise you have to use cash and or some, if you're like in a smaller town somewhere internationally, they won't accept any type of card, it has to be cash only. So it's just better to always have cash with you as a backup. And then if you can use a card, go for it. But that's just how I prefer to travel. I rather swipe the card, plus I get perks with my credit card company for making purchases on that. And then also if you're tipping, um, you have to have cash, obviously. I hate carrying around a lot of cash. That's like the best way to, you know, lose a lot of cash if you get pickpocket or something. So just, there's a lot of things to think about when you are carrying cash around. You must have cash with you as a backup. Um, keep it secure and safely attached to you somehow as a money belt or something. But definitely don't travel without having cash available to you. And then the second thing I do right away is I go in to the United States Post Office website and I get my mail on hold. I'm gonna show you how that's done now. Okay, so here I am on the United States Post Office website mail hold service. In the day, they used to be able to just pop on their website here, uh, mail hold, and you could put in all your information and schedule your mail hold. Well, not so much anymore. You have to create an account now to be able to do that. So it's still very similar um, to the, the old way of doing it, but now you just have to have an online account with the post office for um, being able to do this. So all you do is you go click on the request a mail hold button here. Got your login details. Um, and then you just, so all you do here is you put in your address and they'll ask for your phone number and all those details. Check your availability. 
they'll say, yep, you've, your identity has been verified. And then you just put in your first day of service, whatever day you're traveling. And then when you come back and you say save dates. And um, here's a great option to just say, yes, I want the carrier to deliver my mail on the last day of the service. So on the 25th, they will deliver all my mail. Otherwise, you can go pick it up, but I just have them deliver it. it. Makes everything easier. Life's easier that way. If you have any special instructions, go for it. Put that there. And then, of course, you want to be sign up for informed delivery, which I don't. So schedule mail hold, and then you will get a confirmation email with that uh, request. Another thing, don't forget to change your thermostat. Very important. Ours is tucked back here. It's still a little cold in, in Minnesota, so I'm just going to turn ours down a little bit, though, because we don't need the heat running while we're gone. I usually just put it down a few notches and then um, in the summer of course I bump it up a few notches just so that the air conditioning isn't running all the time. Very important. Okay I'm gonna get out of this robe here and finally get dressed for the morning um, but I'm gonna be kicking my morning off with a workout. That's usually what I do. I usually get up in the mornings, go do a little bit of work and then I go do my uh, daily workout. Today's leg day, which is my favorite day, so I'm gonna get ready for that. I dial in my nutrition and my workout so much more when a trip is coming up. Of course, it's important to eat healthy and exercise and everything. Of course, everyone gets lazy, and I'm definitely guilty of that, but I also try and stay as active as I can because my job, I sit a lot. And when you're getting ready for a trip, you wanna, you know, look your best, feel your best for that trip. Lord knows when you're traveling, whether it's an active trip or if it's more of a beach trip where you might be a little more lazier in the pools or on the beach lane, you usually eat a lot more food. You usually drink a lot more than normal, so your body needs to adjust to that. And I'd rather have it in tip-top shape before we go. So I'll see you on the flip side. Drink your water. Very important. Hi! <laughs> it's like a really nice day here in Minnesota and the snow is melting. It's like spring is in the air. I'm praying it's coming soon. I'm taking advantage of every second I get when I can be outside. So I'm actually gonna work out on our patio today. So the leg day is on the patio. Oh and by the way, if you see chickens, yeah, those are our chickens. We have a chicken coop and the little ladies free range around our yard, so looks like Susie's gonna join me in a workout. That was a good workout. I didn't record all of it because I figured you guys weren't really interested in that, but I got my legs done. So I'm gonna beat the soreness. I'm gonna get all my soreness done before my trip. So when I'm out hiking, I won't be as sore on my vacation. See? <laughs> So one thing I wanted to talk about was our, the little miniature 3.4 ounce bottles that I use when I travel. So in my last video, you would have seen this um, TSA approved liquids bag that you can use. I can put that here for you guys to check out later if you haven't watched it. So I've gone through a lot of the little plastic bottles that you can like buy that are not pre-filled. It's just like generic, regular clear bottles and then you fill them up. You know, it's kind of crazy to me. So I went through those little plastic bottles, generic ones, and they didn't hold up. And so over time I realized just these regular bottles that you get if you were to go buy the miniature um, bottles, these last longer than buying like separate bottles to fill. So I just keep refilling these and so like this one, I don't use this lotion, but I bought the bottle because it's such high quality and it screws tight and I just, it's perfect. So I got rid of the lotion that was in this and I put my lotion in it and it's perfect. It's so much better than those cheap bottles I bought. This little bottle, yeah, this is a deep cleansing oil. Don't use that type of stuff on my face. But I bought this bottle because it's perfect size and it's perfect for my toner. So I just got rid of the cleansing oil that was in it, filled it with my toner, and it's perfect. Same with this guy. This is a thickening spray, which I don't need that. But again, I got this, filled it full of my leave-in deep conditioner, 
and it's perfect. Here's one of the generic ones, and this is actually okay. As you can see, it's just generic. I make my own lotion, so I use that for this because it's really thick. Um, if it was a runnier lotion, I would probably not use it, but it works. Same with this Crest bottle. This has my mouthwash on it. It works great. So I just keep refilling these um, every time I travel because they work good and they're better, I feel they're better than the generic clear bottles you buy and then you fill. Don't forget, sometimes the regular beauty products you purchase, those can actually come in a bottle already that's under the 3.4 ounce bottle. So like this Soothe Serum, which I do use before I straighten my hair or something, it's a exactly 3.4 ounce bottle. So I can just take this entire bottle. I don't have to condense it down into a smaller bottle. So watch that. And another thing too, I don't have any right now, but typically when I have to go buy toothpaste, you can get a full toothpaste, a full one, um, that's under the 3.4 ounces. This one's not, like I said, I, I have to get more of it, but um, yeah, instead of these little guys that, you know, you use a little bit of it and then before you know it, it's gone, you can actually get a full toothpaste. <laughs> just look at the ounces on there and they will be under the ounce. So just watch those types of things. Sometimes you don't have to condense down any of your products that you have. It might already be in the liquids roll. So I have to fill my bottles up for our trip, so I'm gonna start working on that right now. recommend don't fill up your bottles all the way I mean just take enough with you that you think you'll you need to use for your trip because let's say something does happen and the cap falls off or breaks or something that's a lot of liquid just going around I mean how much mouthwash and shampoo and conditioner do you really need for an entire week so I only fill mine maybe halfway um, unless I'm going on a really long trip when I obviously know I'm gonna need a lot more supplies I have had those oopses take place in my suitcase and it is not good So that's why I just finally realized I stock up on these high quality bottles that are already come with the Product inside that I prefer and then I just reuse those it just works better than buying all those other generic bottles They make them this way for a reason obviously Okay, next on my list is nails and let's get real guys how many of you are like me and you only paint your nails when it's summertime or right before a trip because literally my toenails during winter don't even see light <laughs> i know it's bad oh i don't know what i'm gonna do spring is coming maybe like i don't know i've been thinking like neutrals it's kind of a pretty neutralish color hmm. i'm gonna go with this guy it's pretty um, this one is the OPI Mother Road Rose. It's kind of hard to say. Mother Road Rose. <laughs> this is it. This is going on my toenails. Gear it. Okay, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up now. I'm going to finish my toenails here. <laughs> and then I'm going to get ready and have some dinner and um, enjoy the rest of my evening. But I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you like this type of video, uh, let me know in the comments. I, this is kind of something different that I haven't really done. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Click the little bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye!